scripture lets us know that the manna was a seed, yellow in color, well, and clear like gum resin. The people gathered it, they ground it up, mm -hmm. cooked it in pans, and made cakes that tasted like pastry. Mm. And when you read Exodus 16 and 4, you discover why God gave so much detail about how to collect and prepare this miracle food. God commanded them to gather a certain amount of manna every day. If they gathered too much, it would rot and become filled with maggots. And if they didn't gather at all and went out the next morning expecting to find something to eat, there was nothing to be found. So they went hungry. Now I can imagine after going hungry all day, they were happy to see that manna the very next morning. Amen? So God wanted them to learn to totally be dependent upon him. But verse 4 also says, his reason for giving them manna mm -hmm. with the instructions on how to gather and prepare it was to test them to see whether or not they would follow instructions. Mm, yes. How many of us follow instructions? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Of course, the test was for them to see themselves uh -huh. since God already knew what they were going to do. Uh -huh. They just needed to stop whining and eat the man. All right. In other words, they needed to accept how God had chosen mm -hmm. to answer prayer. That's right. Are you guilty of whining about how God has chosen to answer a prayer and pray? Mm -hmm. For example, you might be praying for a promotion on your job, and when you don't get that promotion, you begin to whine. Yes. Lord, I needed that job. I need the extra money. I have a mortgage to pay and kids to feed. I'm qualified. Well. Why didn't I get the promotion? Why did she get it and not me? Not understanding that God is trying to get you to totally trust him for provision. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Not knowing that job is going to be eliminated in the near future because your company is getting ready to downsize. All right, preacher. Not knowing that another person is going to be, another position is going to be created specifically for you mm -hmm. with more money, uh -huh. more benefits, uh -huh. and fewer hours to work. All right, man. Stop one and just eat the mouth. Hmm. Uh, Amen? Amen. You get married and both of you knowingly bring extra baggage into the marriage. And you start whining because he or she won't change. So you start praying to God to change your mate, but the change isn't happening fast enough. Or God isn't doing it the way you want him to. So you start whining. I need him to change. I need her to change. Uh -huh. I need him to leave. I need her to let me leave. All right. <laughs> I need him to step up to the plate. I need her to stop being so controlled. All right. And all you do is whine, whine, and whine. Amen. Amen. If you pray to God about changing some ungodly ways in your spouse, leave them with God and trust God to do it. But also look in the mirror very closely at yourself Amen. Amen. and trust God with changing you. That's right. Stop whining mm -hmm. and eat the mouth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Or maybe you've been asking God to remove something from your life, heal your body, or spare a loved one. You've written down your scriptures. You're confessing daily. You're entering into his presence with praise and worship and believing he's going to remove it. You diligently, you're diligent with your request, and God says to you, just like he told Paul, when Paul asked him to remove the thorn from his side, yes, yes. my grace yes, is it's sufficient. Yes. Anybody believe that today? Amen. Amen. God's grace mm -hmm. is sufficient. Mm -hmm. So you become angry with God, refuse to come to church, and whine to whoever will listen to All you right. about how God didn't answer your prayer. God loves you more than you could ever imagine, and he's always has your best interest at hand. Every decision that he makes is the best one. He knows everything and why everything has to be done the way
way it has to be done, so just trust him. Stop whining and just eat the lamb. Amen. 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 Now as we move forward to verses 10 through 15, we find Moses, the spokesman for God. The man that God used to stretch forth his staff and part the Red Sea. The man that led Israel out of bondage. The man that stood in the presence of the Lord. Finds himself whining to God about the wine. <laughs> Amen. You know that's got to be a mess. Yes, yes. Moses was whining to God about the wine. Moses is whining so hard, he tells the Lord, if I have to continue to listen to these people whine, just go ahead and kill me dead right now. <laughs> Amen. So point number three, wine begets wine. 